I am still Lenny James. Uh, I'm Morgan Jones. Uh, Austin Emilio, I play Dwight. Uh, my name is Scott Gimple. Uh, and, uh, you play a showrunner? Yeah. Well, uh, the chief not anymore. Officer, control, uh, I forgot my badge. Uh, I'm Alex Kaplan. I play Dwight. All right. Let's get, let's start off. Uh, where we I've seen the trailer, and it looks amazing. Uh, a lot of things seem to be happening all at once. So my question is, for anyone who feels like answering the question. What's the exciting thing about the season? It looks like there's these kids that are going around. It's all about the mission of saving everyone, but it looks like we're in a world where nobody trusts anyone. So how do you guys, how are you approaching your characters this season? How is that affecting the story? I think it's an interesting, it's an exciting thing that we're trying to do, which is um, twofold. It's, they, they are trying to do good in this world, right? Because we've gone through the, the turns of how you survive in this world and now as a group we have excuse the phrase a certain set of skills we know how we know how to survive and we want to share that and part of why we want to share it isn't just about the act of doing good it's about making up for the bad we've done in large part and um, and how do you do that in a post-apocalyptic world where people are trying to protect themselves and people are trying to survive. How do you then move on to the next stage, which is about doing something <laughs> civilized, which is to help people and not necessarily to bring people and create a larger and larger group, just to make it be all right for you to exist where you are. And um, how do you do that? And what does it do to you if no one believes you? Yeah. No one trusts you, um, and that's the challenge, and that's the journey, with all of our individual histories, and all of our in, and all of our different relationships to each other. How do we collectively go out and do this thing we're trying to do? And can you speak a bit as to uh, Morgan's mental state this year? He's doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, he is. Thanks for asking. I feel your concern. Um, he, he is, you know, there'd be no drama if he wasn't challenged. Right. And he is certainly challenged. And um, and I would say also in, uh, not necessarily in the first half of this season, but certainly in the second half of the season, Morgan's going to face the biggest challenge he's ever come across. On a mental level. Morgan's going to face the biggest challenge <laughs> he's ever come across. I will, I will say the mental place of all these people, and, and in fact, the reason that Dwight is on this show is that they're, fa they're facing... The, knowing Dwight's character so well and where he was at the end of season eight, it sussed so beautifully with what we're doing. These are people that are desperate for redemption, mm -hmm. that are that are obsessed with it. That's how they're going to live with themselves. But it's not so easy to go out there and people are like, "Yeah, let me let me give you an opportunity to become another person." They have to take it, and they go to such extreme lengths right out of it. The thing that Andrew and Ian and I were talking about from the beginning was we wanted to come out of the gate like a freight train, like a shot from a gun. And it was all fueled by the fact that these people are like, oh my God, we have to go out there, there. we have to go out there and help. And, and there's, there's some scenes when you talk about Morgan's mental state, actually between Morgan and Alicia. I think they're in a very similar mental state. And then actually Dwight sort of comes in with that too. You, you can feel their desperation and wanting to just leave behind who they were. And it's just not easy. And it makes for a really interesting dynamic. And it makes them, maybe, not to make fun of, I, I'm not, I don't mean to make light of mental disturbance, but they're doing some crazy things. They're doing some crazy things to accomplish that. That are highly entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> Now, on the actual walking there, there's been a lot of stuff about having and saving babies for the future. Can we expect that to happen to fear also? Mm. It's, I mean, it's interesting that, yeah, 
It's gonna be like this Avengers assemble of babies. <laughs> um, son of Morgan. <laughs> Come here, son of Morgan. <laughs> Daughter of Dwight. Yeah, years from now, we're all gonna be fighting. Uh, uh, not as many babies this season. I mean, there's 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 a baby boom going on. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned just now that they want, you know, the characters want to leave their past behind. Um, are they also moving? Um, it seems like they're moving into a new area. You know, where are they going to be location-wise? And obviously, if they need a new base as well. Texas. <laughs> they're still in Texas. Yeah, Texas. <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. Uh, wow. Well, yeah. That touches upon a lot of story, but mm -hmm. I think the. Uh, the trailer um, really does show that they find themselves in a landscape that we haven't seen on The Walking Dead with the kind of dangers that we haven't seen on The Walking Dead or, or fear just the whole universe with a population of the people who are there are haunted in different ways it, 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 the way that we cut the trailer it was interesting it was like man it seems like they're in a haunted house and granted, it's a big, big house, it's a landscape, but essentially it's a gigantic one. Right. And also it's one of the things that we're kind of revealing, that which is the kind of price of survival. What it does to people, what it does to them emotionally and what it does to them physically and what it does to them in, in, in the environment that we had. Um, we meet someone at some point who has just never gone outside. Just yeah. from the moment it began, just never went outside. And we see the first moment that they, that they, that, that happens to them, and and why they choose to do something they haven't done for the entirety of the the change that's happened in the world. And um, and we see we ex see. A, um, people who all they know um, or for the vast majority of their lives what they know is only this change that's happened in the world and what that does to them if you're growing up in the middle of that when you were talking about babies born what, what has it done to kids who at the age of five or six when this started have now got to 11 or 12 or 13 what has that done to their development and who they've had to be um, we explore that as well I mean it's a it's a trip in the, in the trailer it showed that uh, when Dwight shows up Morgan smiles and I was like I don't think they were friends like why is Morgan so happy to see Dwight I it's would say trailer. that smile <laughs> I read that smile as, and I love it because we cut right I think that's a that's a like I see that and if there was a thought bubble above it <laughs> it would say like this is awkward <laughs> like that's how I read the show which is like I don't know where to start well because I was like I would think Morgan's first response would be to pull a gun on him well do you remember okay and this is just me like being the person in the panel like in the audience like raising their hand uh, Negan had Dwight right. bound and with a gun to That's his true. head in their yeah. final battle, yeah. and also totally bruised and screwed up in a uh, in a Daryl jumpsuit. Well, he also Morgan at the end was like anybody enemy enemy, and everybody was enemy. So I didn't feel like Dwight had moved into the friend territory yet. That's all. I was and I think also what Jesus and Carol were saying to. I, but I wouldn't I wouldn't use the word friend. <laughs> But yeah, I'm gonna go with you. On that. Thank you, thank you. We, we, we got a long ways to go. But also, that smile ain't all of it. Okay. No. Okay. So there's a thing. There's a thing. The thing that there's a lot of things. That, but, but the thing that comes immediately for it is actually a really interesting left-hand turn to the environment, to everything that's going on. It's uh, the environment with which we first see White is crazy and awesome and definitely came out of the landscape that we portray the show and that we shoot the show. And it is a and it is a big moment because it's 
it's actually the first time they've ever spoken to each other. That's what I was thinking. I was like, I don't remember them ever. Yeah, okay. You know, now uh, Crazy. with bringing Dwight over, this is the second character you brought from the main show. Are you going to continue to do that, trying to bridge them together, or are you just going to, just a little bit, you told them specifically for fear? We're going to empty out the other show. One <laughs> show. <laughs> the last one on there. The mission, our mission is just to reach out and we're going to grab Carol and uh, <laughs> yes. blindfold oh her. God. And when she takes it off, she's in Texas. She's like, oh, shut up. <laughs> One at a time, we're just going to be kidding. I, I feel like when, uh, this is somebody. <laughs> I would, it's, it's a rare thing. It's, it's, it's not going to happen like this a lot. But I will say, there are different sorts of crossovers that we're going to do that tie the shows together and sort of the universe together in certain ways that have to do with sort of the the greater happenings in the world. And then, um, and then, in telling sort of stories of the past, uh, we might see characters interact or or just see those characters that we haven't seen in a while. So I mean, there, this is a, this is probably it, this is a rare thing. We're not going to do it all the time, but there's going to be other ways for the universe to study. One of the characters that is in The Walking Dead that we, that fans are wondering about, that in terms of Dwight, is his wife Sherry, and whether that's going to play. Um, a part in the arc of or in one of the reasons why he's come to yeah. this show. Can you speak to that at all? I'm, I'm wondering about that too. <laughs> <laughs> we, we shall see. <laughs> so, what kind of Dwight do we see? Um, the Dwight that we first see in Fear compared to the one that left the Walking Dead? Um, Definitely doesn't get any easier for him. He's um, probably in the darkest spot he's ever been. Um, that says a lot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'll just I'll I'll, I'll bookmark it there. Oh no no. I, mean, oh, I, I, I just I, mean he's been in some dark. Yeah. Places. He's been. Yeah yeah yeah. Like, okay okay okay. I thought you were like Austin. You've said enough. Says a lot. Says a lot. We gotta go. Just, like, uh, I was agreeing. You're yeah. Saying, that's yeah, it is heavy. It's a, it, Wyatt has definitely been in some uh, tough spots uh, on the walk. And, and it, it just it gets tougher for him. You know that that's that's all I can say. It's, it's, it's now it just gets drawn out. You know, like the the, the darkness is just drawn out and deep. It's, that's all I can give you. The nights are becoming longer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Days or years for this guy at this point. So. But I'm, I'm excited to, to show where he, where he is. It's, it's, it's fun to play that. He has such a strong purpose that it, it, it does make sense for him to be in this sort of spot. Where he is. Yeah. Real quick, if you talk about the expanding universe, real quick, I know you're probably not going to answer this question, but all right. <laughs> but do you have any idea, like timeline-wise, when we're going to get the movies or anything like that? Is that next year? Is that the following year? I mean, right now, 2020 is looking like a really big year for the universe in general and, and the show. Uh, you know, I guess it's the beginning of our next decade, so we're trying to kick it off okay. in style. Um, but it, it looks like 2020 is going to be okay. So are you but saying oh, we're going to shoot the movie in 2020? We're going to get the movie in 2020? It's going to be a big I'm going to have you in the budgeting meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.